Hello guys, Mr. Invest a lot. I'm not a financial advisor, do your own research. Today we're going to be talking about Arrival, which is a UK based EV company fresh out of London. So as you can see here, BlackRock backed Arrival in talks to go public via SPAC. So they've secured cash from both BlackRock and they've secured cash also from Hyundai and Kia. So I was thinking, is this just another EV stock? There's so many EV stocks popping up. Everyone wants a piece of that market as the world transitions into a kind of greener, cleaner, more renewable energy world. So BlackRock has currently invested over 100 million in the UK electric bus and van maker Arrival, expanding the push into greener transport. So when I was looking at Arrival, I was thinking, is this just another EV company? What is so good about this company? So here, BlackRock has invested 118 million into a British electric powered startup. So what they do is they create electric powered city buses and commercial vans and they claim its vehicles can reach up to 300 miles on a single charge. So BlackRock has also joined the likes of Hyundai Motor Company and Kia Motors Corporations and also the logistics firms UPS. So if we take a look over here, we're going to go into their investor presentation and we're going to see what makes them special, what makes them different. So first things first, we're looking at their investment highlights. So they say that Arrival is revolutionizing the electric vehicle industry. So they have four vehicle designs currently expected to be in the market by 2023, with a start of production for the first vehicle planned in the fourth quarter of 2021. They have $1.2 billion in back orders right now. Their unit economics enable price competitiveness and lower total cost of ownership to fossil fuel equivalents. They have game-changing micro factories which enable flexible low capex production. They expect that they're going to lead the industry with profitability because of their hardware, their software and their rob robotics platforms. They're named the number one startup to work for in the UK 2020 and they're validated by both blue chip strategic and commercial companies. So we're going to be looking here at Arrival's partners, one of them is UPS. So currently they have an order of $1.2 billion for 10,000 units and it has an option to exercise where they can order an additional 10,000. UPS, they had the option to actually use Workhorse. They've also been trialing out Workhorse vehicles and some from many other companies. But of all the companies, they chose Arrival to be uh, their partner. So together they created purpose-built vehicles based on UPS's requirements, which is a first for UPS. And UPS is obviously um, delivers 5.2 deliveries every single year. They have an automotive fleet size of 120,000 vehicles and their daily delivery volume of 21.9 million. They're aiming for 25% of total vehicles purchased annually to be alternate fuel. So here, this, is, this slide's really interesting. So if we're looking at Arrival, we wanna see what kind of products they're producing. And they're saying they currently have four designs, right? So Arrival is a revolution in commercial electric vehicles. They're the best in class zero emission vehicles, competitively priced to ICE vehicles, hardware and software upgradability over a lifetime of the vehicle, autonomous ready, durable proprietary composite material used for exterior and interior panels, high margin vehicles with unrivaled unit economics, and elevated user experience so currently in their product pipeline they said that by 2021 they're going to be pulling out this electric vehicle this bus in 2021 so the range is 240 to 400 kilometers on a charge they can currently hold 80 to 125 passengers and they expect to start production at the end of 2021 so in that fourth quarter so currently they're in advanced discussions with orders if we're looking at their electric van, so here look it says they're kind of cargo vans in it. So they're looking to produce these cargo vans in 2022 so they don't actually have the product out there and that's when they're going to be you know rolling them out. So their range is 150 to 340 kilometers. They didn't put it in miles they put it in kilometers. The payload is 975 to 2000 kg of cargo. They expect to start production in the third quarter of 2022 and they have orders of over 10,000. So when we're looking at these kind of electric vans, I'm wondering, is it, it says cargo mass here. I'm wondering, is this the electric van that they'd probably be able to enter with the UPS contract if it gets delayed? Or is it a large electric van that they'd be using? So looking at their large electric van, it's also gonna be rolling out at 2022, same as the electric van. They're gonna have slightly longer range between 190 to 400 kilometers. The payload will be 4,000 kilograms and they expect to start that in the third quarter of 2022. They've already got orders of over 2,500 as well. And their small vehicle platform, um, they've got a range of 100 to 300 kilometers, payload of 
up to 800 kg and they're looking to roll that in 2023. So in the product pipeline, they're mainly focusing on this electric bus first and then they're looking at these kind of commercial electric vans for fleets probably they're targeting. So as we can see here, they're looking to focus on commercial vehicles first. So they wanna capitalize on key industry trends. So the industry is currently shifting away from all of these kind of petrol and diesel cars and they wanna have a greener kind of fleet because of all of the kind of maybe carbon tax or emissions tax that may be coming in and the new rules and regulations too. So the industry shift favoring zero emission vehicles with public policy driving electrification. The rise in e-commerce, 37% increase, they expect from 2020 to 2024, it's resulted in a fast growing van market segment. So the superior cost of total ownership compared to both fossil fuel and electric vehicles on the market, so they said they're superior. Commercial fleet operators thoroughly understand their range requirement. Charging infrastructure concentrated in depots. It simplifies deployment compared to retail. So they're gonna have their charging stations in the depots. Okay, so if we're looking at the sizable market opportunity, currently they're saying the initial addressable market is 70 billion currently for these vans. And then in the future, it's gonna be 280 billion. Also with buses, it's around about 40 billion and the addressable market in the future is gonna be 154 billion. This is what it's all about here. We're looking at the superior total cost of ownership. So they're listing out their arrival van and arrival bus. So the vehicle, they've got highly competitive purchase price due to design vertical integration. The best in-class product attributes in weight, cargo volume and payload. In terms of the infrastructure, they've got scalable design allowing for multiple power configurations. They've got smart charging software enabled. In terms of energy, they've got optimized energy efficiency. So that's kilowatts to kilometers for specific use cases. Flexible battery configuration. Their maintenance costs, modular components for ease of replacement. Quick, simple and cost-effective serviceable panels. And they're engineered to serve 10 plus years. So looking at their total uh, cost of ownership for the vans that run on roughly 100 kilometers per day, 365 days a year over a 10 year period. Arrival vans, they've calculated at 25 cents per kilometer. That's what, what's interesting here is per kilometer. Compared to a, a diesel van, which will cost 30 cents per ki kilometer and competitor EV vans, 35 cents per kilometer. And here they said that the competitor's data is provided by Arrival's internal market research team. This 35 cents per kilometer here is weak compared to workhorses 0.03 cents per mile. When they're saying that they're, you know, superior total cost ownership for arrival van and bus, what is this van going to be used for? Because if they're looking at last mile delivery, when we look at workhorses compared to presentation, you know, they're looking at it could be 3 cents or 4 cents per last mile for delivery. Whereas here they're saying 25 cents per kilometer. So it's actually way more expensive than workhorse vehicle if they're to use it for last mile delivery purposes. Then if we look at their transit bus, the total cost of ownership. So this is traveling 250 kilometers per day, 365 days a year over 10 year periods. They're saying it will only cost $396,000, uh, 43 cents per kilometer. Whereas diesel buses will cost 82 cents per kilometer and the competitor electronic buses will cost 87 cents per kilometer. So they're saying that they have a 47% improvement for cost ownership compared to diesel and 50% for their competitors. Over here they said that they've got a 17% improvement on costs and they've also got a 28% improvement compared to their competitor e-vans. So they're saying they have next generation electronic vehicles. Here is the arrival van. So they've been working with UP and they see a 2 million addressable market volume by 2025. So there's around 2 million vehicles that they'd be able to sell. 10,000 vehicle orders currently with an option to buy 10,000 more of these and 5,000 vehicles in a late state, uh, stage discussions with other people. So in terms of the arrival van, they've compared it to a Ford Transit and Mercedes Sprinter. So if they're comparing it to that market, are they going after the construction kind of market with these Fords, you know, Transits and Mercedes Sprinters? They're saying that it's the lowest in weight, unladen weight, kg. They're saying that the payloads, it can actually hold more payload in kg as well with 1,975. And the nearest one is the Ford Transit on 1,100 kg. It's the lowest to the ground as well, floor to ground per millimeters. They've actually got more cargo volume so you can store more stuff in your arrival van than Mercedes Sprinter and Fords. So here they've got an arrival van that is slightly higher and then here they've got an arrival van that is equal weight to the Mercedes Sprinter and Ford Transit. So for me, when I'm looking at these arrival vans, they actually look pretty good, very futuristic, very nice. I like the way that right next to the steering wheel, you've got like a, almost like an iPad panel 
a kind of tablet panel that pops out at you and it can show you where to go and also give you all of the information you need, the analytics of your vehicle. So when they're talking about these electric buses, as electrification comes into the market, more and more cities, town centers, they're gonna be using these kind of buses to get around. So Arrival could potentially be selling up to 131,000 vehicles per year in 2025, because that's the whole market size. In terms of the Arrival bus, it's a lighter gross weight than uh, previous buses of Mercedes, E, Citaro and the Yutong E12. It's a lot lighter than both of them. It can also hold a greater payload. It has a better unladen weight. So this is what the Arrival buses will look like. It's very futuristic inside, you know, very nicely made and purpose built. Um, you can actually see where your stop's gonna be. So instead of you being on like apps like City Mapper, you can actually look out for for where your next stop is going to be, how long it's going to take to, to get there as well. So it lists the times and the places. So this is really interesting. Um, I previously thought, wow, if this arrival company, um, they're making micro factories in the US, what if they come to the USA? Uh, are they going to give workhorse competition? Well, in 2021, they're producing nothing. In 2022, they'll actually get the, the vehicle out of their buses, finally in the fourth quarter. And then towards 2023, they're gonna be um, pulling out this van and large van before pulling out their last uh, small electric vehicle in the third quarter of that year. So if the UPS, so say for the US, say if the USPS contract gets delayed for two years, then maybe these guys stand a chance at actually securing, you know, some of those sales. But I think Workhorse is still one of the high competitors. And even if they were to, to drop the contract and open it for 2021 or delay it for 2021, I think Workhorse will still have a very good chance at getting part of that contract. So this is Arrival's new method. Arrival is not just saying that it's a, a vehicle company only, it's saying that it's a tech company. Reason being is it has in-house plug and play components. So it has substantial cost reduction, it's upgradable and it's designed for micro factories. It's built of all of these kind of materials that are low tooling and overall cost. It's saying that it's made of these composite materials which you know are highly durable as well as being low in cost, very lightweight and also designed for micro factories. What's interesting here is the skateboard platform they've adopted. So they've actually got a skateboard kind of platform where they just drop the vehicle on top as they've already built the, but the base of it like a skateboard. And their approach in, in terms of production, can they actually produce these vehicles fast enough? Because they're producing them in small factories, micro factories that they're gonna crop up in UK and USA. So they're saying that the micro factories are good because they have a low carbon footprint low capex, they can deploy rapidly in response to local demands. They also have in-house vehicle software, plug and play, complete control of user experience and access to vehicle data to optimize the total cost of ownership. Arrival's new method of design assembly provides greater profitability at lower capex compared to existing OEMs and the ability to scale rapidly. So they said that they're innovating and they're changing the way that we actually operate and we create vehicles. So here it's saying that the industry changing micro factory approach. So I found an article here where it states that they have around about 70 robots instead of the initial 2000 robots to produce a car, they're using only 70. So their first micro factory they wanna build is in Bista, which is in a place in, in UK. So they're gonna be building a van micro factory there. What's interesting to see here as well is they're building a bus micro factory in South Carolina. So within this micro factory approach, they're gonna be using these autonomous mobile robots. So they're gonna be using technology cells with vehicles moved between the cells by autonomous mobile robots. So traditional assembly line operates at one speed with stations in a specific order to optimize everything. The order of technology cells can be changed or the same cell can be used multiple times on the same vehicle. This enables micro factories to build multiple different vehicle types. So they're basically saying that materially it's a lower cost. They've got high scalability layout so they can produce a lot. It's very scalable and they can deploy in areas of demand within a six month setup time. So there's no paint shop, there's no metal stamping. So reduce logistic costs. It's located close to customers and it's built for customers needs. So here they compared Arrival to traditional OEMs and they're saying this is the way that they can produce stuff. So Arrival's one micro factory can produce 10,000 vans per year. So what's really interesting is this uh, modular skateboard platform. You drop your car on top of it and it's very similar to Canoe. I remember looking at Canoe's skateboard platform and thought 
do I actually like this kind of skateboard technology? Um, is it safe? Does it work? And is it durable? And when they're dropping, when they're producing it, they're trying to say that they're doing this to save money and they're able to mass produce like this. So this is Canoe and they're saying that, yeah, they were one of the first ones to come up with this EV skateboard technology. This is what the arrival thing will look like. So Arrival was stating here that their modular skateboard platform technology is designed for flexibility and micro factory assembly. So the advantages of it is they're designed to kind of automate assembly and production. It's highly flexible for use across multiple classes of vehicles. They've done crash tests with it. So simulation crash tests pass, physical tests commence with positive results to date. And the design is it's a fully flat door front to rear vehicle. So the status currently for this is it's ready for mass production. So they're really trying to save as much money as possible while creating something quality. So this is interesting here. They've also shown how they can cut costs. So they've got a lightweight, um, and 25 times reduced tooling costs. So they've reinvented the way auto industry approaches materials. Composite tooling goes from CAD data to production in just two weeks and it's used for exterior and interior body panels. It allows panel design for fleet owners. Arrival vehicles do not require traditional metal stamping or paint shop techniques that are cumbersome and expensive. So costs, it's got low cost, light, versatile. The materials are also widely available and they're ready for mass production. So here they're just showing crash tests. They've shown an arrival body panel compared to a generic steel body and the steel body looks mashed up, whereas the arrival composite body panel looks all right. So that's a, a low crash test at 10 miles per hour. They also have this kind of digital ecosystem which will help people and make user, will make the user and ride experience easy. The inside of these vans and these cars are gonna be beautiful with the display monitor right next to the wheel. No need for you to prop up a little sat nav and it, you will never get lost on your route because it will show you directly where you need to go so this is really interesting it gives companies an economic moat when they can innovate and create patents that will um, stop other companies coming in and snatching their software their systems and technology arrivals patent portfolio is comprised of approximately 180 different innovations which have been filed in various patent applications. So some of these can include, you know, van innovations, bus, small vehicle innovations, battery, composite material innovations, micro factory and vehicle flow design innovations, modular hardware, modular software, robotics related innovations and another 40 miscellaneous ones. So all of these provide an economic moat. If they're patented and you have these innovations, it gives you a competitive advantage over, over other companies. Arrival's total revenue distribution for 2024, they predict that they're gonna make $14.1 billion in revenue. And of that 14.1 billion, they're saying their gross profit will be $3.7 billion. With the bulk of their revenue coming from their bus, then their large vans, Okay, what's interesting to note here is Arrival has put up this kind of company comparison. So they're talking about their savings that they can do. So they said 17% van, 47% bus. Now they're looking at cargo vans of Workhorse and they didn't put any statistics. Most probably because Workhorse can save more cents per mile. So Workhorse is 3 cents per mile and these Arrival vans are actually 25 cents per kilometer. Now if we look at their contracted book order, we can see they've got 20,000 units, they said $1.2 billion of pre-orders for arrival. But yet again, they don't show the statistics for certain other companies, including Lordstown Motors. Lordstown Motors has a lot of pre-orders booked in currently worth in the millions or even maybe touching the billions. So looking at the arrival stock price, this is uh, the blank check company that they're about to merge with, so CIIG Merger Corp. And as you can see, there's a 72% increase in share value since Friday. Because Arrival has the technology and the software, as well as the strategy to implement it, all they have to do now is fulfill those orders. Because they've sold people a really nice dream, we just have to see, are these people going to be able to make that dream a reality? Mr. Investor Lot, thank you for looking through the presentation. Please click subscribe to join the family, and I'll give you some juicy updates.